Okay, so for today's launch box setup guide, we are checking out the very awesome Cave Arcade system. So for this setup guide, I'm going to be showing you how to import your Cave collection inside a launch box. I'm also going to be showing you how to apply overlays. I'm going to be going through some video settings and generally everything to give you a very awesome experience in a launch box. So check this one out. <laughs> Okay, before I start today's cave setup guide for Launchbox, make sure to hit notifications and subscribe and like if you like today's video, it really helps my channel, plus it gets you up to date retro emulation content that I release every day on my channel, just Jamie. So we're looking at cave today, and if you're not familiar with cave, it offers some very awesome arcade games, which you probably wouldn't know a lot of them if you're in the west part of the world. A lot of these games are actually Japanese, I believe. So what we're going to do first is take a look at the cave games. Now I've got my cave games in a dedicated folder which I recommend you doing. Your cave games for this need to be in this .zip file extension. If you just open one of these up you're going to find a lot of .bin files. You don't need to extract your cave games but you need to leave them in zipped file extension like I've done just here. Next thing we're going to want to do is use RetroArch for this and we're going to use the main core. So what we need to do is actually find your RetroArch folder. So when you install LaunchBox for the first time, it's quite likely you would have installed RetroArch to go with it. So what I'm going to do is show you where RetroArch would have installed to by default once you set up LaunchBox for the first time. It's going to be in your C drive. If you go to the bottom of C drive, you'll find the users folder. And in here, you'll find the name of your computer. So in my case, it's Jamie. If I go inside of there, you're then gonna find LaunchBox. Open up LaunchBox folder. And inside emulators, you're gonna find your RetroArch folder. Now, if you don't have this folder in here, then you need to go to the RetroArch website and I recommend downloading a portable version and just popping it inside of this folder, just like I've done. So if we go inside RetroArch, first, we're gonna just scroll down and we're gonna open up RetroArch itself. So RetroArch.exe. And what we're gonna do first is go to settings, we're gonna to go to video, and from video, full screen mode, and just make sure start in full screen mode is turned to on. Just left click on this. Okay, so from now on, when we start launching our cave games through RetroArch and LaunchBox, it's no longer gonna open up in a window mode, but full screen mode instead. So from here, I'm going to use my Xbox controller and press B to come out of this and go to main menu. I'm going to go to online updater, core downloader. And if you're new to RetroArch, uh, the cores are actually pretty much very small emulators. Let's just in fact say they're emulators. It will just make things easier for some people. So what we need to do from here is just scroll down and the one I suggest using is just titled Arcade Mame in brackets. And I find most cave games work fine with this core. So press A on your controller, or in my case, my Xbox controller is going to be A. And that's going to say downloading core. Okay, so the core has now been installed and you're going to find a hashtag on the end of it. That just tells us it's been installed and we don't need to install it again. If I press B on my controller to come out of here, I'm going to go to update installed cores. And what this does is just checks to make sure it's the latest core or emulator, if you like, that is running. So if I come out of here and out again, what I'm going to do is just go to configuration file, save current configuration. I'm going to press A on this one. And if I press B to come out, and go down to quit RetroArch. Okay, so that's main setup through RetroArch. So what we need to do next is actually open up LaunchBox. And before I forget, I've got a license.xml on my desktop and that's for the premium big box 
version of LaunchBox, which I highly recommend. So what I'm gonna do is just pop that license into place. If I find my LaunchBox shortcut, if I right click on it, open file location, and again, LaunchBox right click, file location. If you do happen to have a license for a big box, then that XML file needs to just be dragged into that folder. Okay, so if we come out of here and open up LaunchBox. Let me just remind you the latest version as I'm recording this video was actually 13.11. Uh, this one updated a couple of days ago, actually when I was releasing my main for a launch box uh, setup guide, I realized at that point 13.11 is out. So uh, yeah, some new, new features added to 13.11, obviously it's an update. I've not personally checked into it yet, but let's just likely say it's for the best. So we're gonna close this ads games window down. And what we're going to do is go to Tools, Import, ROM Files, and we're going to press Next on the Import ROMs from Files Wizard, Add Folder. Now, I need to add my main games. So like I showed you just now, my main games are on my desktop. So go to Desktop, and I'm going to just left-click on Cave, where my games are. Left-click on Select Folder, Next. What platform are you importing games for? Now, it doesn't say Cave here. So what we're gonna do is actually just select Arcade and make sure Show Default Platforms is checked. Go to Next, choose an emulator, RetroArch, and make sure automatically download RetroArch Core if missing is checked. We've already downloaded the core, of course, but it's always handy to leave this on for future setups or any other system that you're wanting to import for LaunchBox. If we go to next. So next thing we're going to see is, would you like to move or copy the files? This is referring to our games. So I always use the files in their current location for my LaunchBox setup guides. So it's not going to move them. So I'm going to select use the files in their current location. And make sure that search for game information in the local metadata database is checked. Uh, it also says recommended and I recommend you this myself. This is going to search for information uh, through LaunchBox servers for our games. Press next. Now the next part of this is going to be your basic artwork. So it's going to ask you what types of artwork do you want for your games. Now crucially if you're using big box like I do if you've got the hard drive space, it's very useful if you check all of these. So come to Big Box if we're gonna be using different themes. Different themes need different pieces of artwork. If you don't have much space and you don't use Big Box, then just go to Check None. And then I would recommend just picking out a couple of these to save you space. So something like Box 3D and Box Front. I'm gonna check all and go to Next. And I'm also using MU Movies, which if you use big box MU Movies, is pretty crucial to get that big box experience. Uh, it's going to give you films, for example. So MU Movies is a paid subscription, which I don't mind paying for myself because I like to support the community. I'm going to press next. Make sure download bezels is checked. And personally, I would suggest downloading only theme bezels what this does is gives us the ability to add artwork in place of those boring black bars on the side of all to four by three ratio games go to next next and this is finally a summarization of what games is going to be important into launch box so here's all my games which are on my desktop with the dot zip file extension if we go to finish and it's currently downloading all the artwork which I've selected. So this can take a couple of minutes depending on your internet connection. Now, let me just remind you that we use arcades during the setup for cave games. If you're already using a main ROM set, which I actually covered the other day, then just remember that arcades will show up 
and another system, a subsystem, which will be cave. And here we go. So this is the part where it's going to show us all our lovely artwork and us geeks out there. We absolutely love this type of thing. <laughs> now, if you're not using big box and you want to experiment with how your artwork looks, very easily just go to image group at the top and from here you can change from say 3D boxes for example to uh, clear logos and here we go so image group and then just select the type of artwork you want on display in launch box so personally I recommend just going for boxes or 3D boxes I think news look best so just let it download the bezel pack uh, that's what it's explaining just now instead of having those boring black lines on the side of left and right of the screen in our gameplay we can actually change this and this part can take a little bit of time so what i'm going to do actually while this is downloading is actually open up one of my favorite cave games and that's the first one just here ergolex so to launch your game through launch box just left click on it and go to play Well, as you can see that just opened up with main 2003 and what this did during the setup process or launch box is actually downloaded the 2003 main core i chose to download it manually just in case this didn't work through launch box but anyways it's now up and running Okay, so as we can see, the game is working fine, but those boring black sides that we got, we can actually change this through RetroArch Quick Menu. To access this, I'm pressing my Xbox button. Whichever button you press to get you into your RetroArch menu, like I've got here, just press it. And what we're gonna do is go to Quick Menu. I'm gonna press A on my controller. And if I just scroll down, I'm gonna find on-screen overlay, display overlay, enable this by pressing A. And make sure overlay preset is put on to either main horizontal or main vertical. In this game's case, I'm going to select main vertical.cfg. If I come out of here and go back into my game, quick menu, resume. Roger. As we can see, we now got some funky sides rather than those plain black boring sides. Other things we can do through the Retro Arch Quick Menu, inside Quick Menu, Save States. State Slot is going to tell you how many slots you've got where you can save and load states. I'm going to use Slot 0. I'm going to go to Save State. And if I press my quick menu button again, which is my Xbox button, I'm going to go to load state. Power up. And as you can see, that's loaded back to the same place where I saved it from. Very easy to do. Other things we can do in quick menu then is go to settings. If we go to video, scaling. And we can turn bilinear filtering on, which just as it says, adds a slight blur to the game. Come back out. So not so pixelated. And also if we go to settings and video, video filter, 
we can then add filters to this to give it a bit more of an arcade feel to it. So I'm going to enable, uh, say, scanline two times dot fill. If I go back into the game, And as you can see, it's now applied a filter to it, which in this case is a scan line. If we come out of here and go to set and scan video, from video, we can go to scaling, we can go to aspect ratio. Now, depending on the cave game that you're playing, some of these ratio sizes might not apply or it might just look terrible. For example, if I go to full, that's going to give us a full screen for this game in particular. If I put this game back on, it's going to look well out of place. It's going to look very stretched and just terrible. But as you can see, because it's now full screen, I've also got the overlays in place. If I take these out of place, quick menu, on screen overlay, and just make sure that's turned off. Now, if we go back into the game, the overlays, or rather the side artwork, is going to be gone and we got full screen. As you can see, this particular game just doesn't work well in full screen. This game was designed for the original look that it had. So that's it for today's launch box and cave setup, guys. Like I said at the start of the video, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content that I upload every day, even on my ill days, which I'm pretty ill today. I still upload. I'm a dedicated emulation channel, and I hope you like what you see today. So anyways, also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro. <laughs> Thank you.